changes. One thing about China, honey, they will change your policy and you just need to adjust. Thrive as a teacher when you get here. I have gotten a lot of messages from new teachers who have kind of felt like, yo, I've, I've made it now, I'm here in China and then I'm struggling. So if you are enjoying and you're liking this video and you want this video, give it a thumbs up guys. Make sure you share it and watch till the end. Welcome back to another video. I'm Sebastian Mkize and this is my channel. If you are a regular degular, a regular liker, a regular sharer, honey, thank you so much for coming back once again. And if you're new here today, welcome to the channel. Make sure that you click the subscribe button so you can join the regular degulars. We are on the road to 30k. 30k. Guys, as if you're going to 30k, please, by May, by the end of May, let's get to 30k. We can do it. So make sure you share the videos, like them, comment so that it reaches more people and we get more people join the regular regulars. So guys, as you can see by the title of this video, this is, I think, the first video I've made in a long time. Probably like in a year and a half about coming to China and teaching in China in terms of how to get a job in China. Like, I don't think I've done content like that post 2022. Yeah, I have, I'm confident that is how I feel about it. Um, mainly because there have been so many changes. One thing about China, honey, they will change your policy and you just need to adjust. So I just feel like it's been such a like roller coaster that i just felt giving you guys information that i know would probably change in a week or so would just be you know working myself to the bone getting all that research and then it's all for waste you know what i mean so i really think that this time i feel like things have kind of solidified and things have kind of calmed down a bit there have been less changes in the policies and documentation needed to come to china and i've seen a lot of new south africans in china all of you guys that i've seen have been so kind and just really amazing when i meet you guys in person so yeah i thought okay this is the right time to make a video and kind of share my kind of expertise about how you can also really thrive as a teacher when you get here. I have gotten a lot of messages from new teachers who have kind of felt like, yo, I've, I've made it now, I'm here in China, and then I'm struggling. How can I get, uh, you know, how can I get more out of my experience here? How can I do well at my job or at school? How can I, you know, um, just, you know, thrive and do well as a teacher? Because it does feel different from South Africa. And of course, like it's normal uh, to feel kind of a big culture shock in the school, build a big sh uh, culture shock in the classroom. But I thought, let me make a video that will cater to both those needs. Number one, just an updated brief um, discussion about how you can get a job in China and how you can uh, get your documentation, what things you need, etc, etc. And then the other part of this video is going to be about how you can be a, a thriving English second language teacher, ESL teacher, kindergarten teacher. How can you make sure, and these points are going to be general, how can you make sure that when you get here, you really excel, you stand out and you, you know, enjoy your time here because that's what we want. I want for every single person to come to China and have a beautiful time, but it has to be unique to you but there are things that you can do to make sure that your transition is smooth and you know authentic to you so yeah let's get this video started i feel like i've gotten a really big intro so if you are enjoying and you're liking this video and you want this video give it a thumbs up guys make sure you share it and watch till the end okay so the first thing i want to discuss are the documents so i'm just going to list them i'm going to also put them on the screen i feel like i've got a lot of screen space so we're going to make it beautiful so the five the documents that you need are a bachelor's degree teaching degree is of course preferred in the market that we're in now um the competition is tough guys the competition is tough and so if you are someone who is about to go into university and you want to be a teacher excellent do your degree if you are someone who has a degree already you're like eh much I get to done because now I've got like a sports science for example like me so this is where you can get a TEFL certificate which is a teaching English as a foreign language certificate you can get that online I've done multiple videos about accredited TEFL uh, companies uh, just a rule of thumb, guys. If it's free, it's it's already giving red flag. But if you pay for it, I think a good range would be between a thousand and four five thousand rand. More than that, 
it's not a scam or it could be a scam, but you need to do some research on the sites or on like review as sites about the, the TEFL certificate itself. So yeah, that is my advice. Take it, leave it, disagree with it. It's fine. But that's what I would think when it comes to that. Okay. Another thing you will need is a police clearance, a passport, because honey, that is very, very important. A passport, um, a police clearance. So when you come to China, you cannot have a criminal record. Okay. Another thing is that you need to make sure that all these above documents, so documents, not the passport, documents are apostled at Durko for international use, as well as your SA degree must go to Saka. Okay. So those are the most important things. Once you've started kind of the paperwork things, and your school has you and you are not has you rather but has accepted you and given you an offer letter you need to start the preparations for a work permit and one of the major things is a medical check medical checks can be done at, at um at uh private hospitals there are institutions in south africa that cater to people who are traveling so they do vaccinations and things like that if you're going to specific countries i forget what they're called but you can go there and get a medical check as well um and they, it does cost money so be prepared to pay some money i don't know the most updated amounts but you do need a medical check for china unfortunately you cannot get a work permit if you are hiv positive but you are able let me just emphasize this because i feel like there is some changes done in terms of as a tourist um the, there's different things when it comes to uh, uh hiv statuses and different visas but for the work permit you cannot get a work permit if you are hiv positive so i'm saying this now because i have gotten a lot of messages about this all right so those are just the papers like the documents so why i started with that guys is because Please do not start looking for jobs in China, going online, applying, if you don't have one or two of these. Passport is example number one. Guys, if you are someone who wants to move abroad and work abroad, by now you should have a passport have, or have applied for a passport. Degree as well. Do not enter the chat of applying online if you still have not studied or have a degree or on the way to achieving a degree. Like, if you have a matric certificate right now, humble fund then come back to this video okay so i understand that you are excited about the future you want to see but i, I just feel like we need to focus in on the on the small steps before getting to the application process so the small steps are getting your degree making sure you apply for police clearance okay if you have all those things already let's go onto the website and start applying all right love so other requirements that are needed for teaching in china you do need to be a native english speaker that means that you are coming from either of these countries i'm gonna put them on the list those that those are considered as native speaking countries or native english speaking countries uh, south africa is on that list another thing you need recently in the competitive market that we're in this era that we're in is two years plus experience now i say this because i want you to be aware of it but it does not mean that there are no schools who are going to, um, who there aren't any schools that are going to accept you if you don't have experience. I think take it with a pinch of salt and be aware that that's what they want. That is what's going to get the highest salary. But it doesn't mean that they're not hiring people without experience. I'm just saying it like that because I think let's not get afraid of not ticking all the boxes because there are some schools who will really just love you even if you don't have experience they love you in the interview they want you to be a part of their school so they will accept you even if they have another candidate who has more experience okay so another thing i want to talk about is salaries now i've spoken about the documents that you need the other requirements the other thing i want to chat about is the salary and what i want to talk about this is because i know that there's been a drastic drastic change from what the salary packages used to be in the past that is pre-covid post-covid we did have a really big spike because there were uh, schools that were trying to keep the teachers in the country so that people don't go home but you know now it's kind of just plunged you know what i mean this has been a increase like an influx of south africans coming to china and the fact that the companies know that they can get people who are desperate, who are willing to take a low salary, and then there are teachers who are demanding a higher salary, who are you going to choose? You know what I mean? So they have kind of uh, gravitated towards teachers who are, are accepting lower salaries and not resigning people who have earned, you know, the post-COVID salary, uh, rather the COVID salary, you know what I mean? So recently based on my research the entry level has dropped from about 20 to twenty-five thousand to 10 to fifteen 
thousand RMB. Now, this is what you can expect in smaller to medium, like third tier to second tier cities. First tier, Beijing and them, I still think there are still some jobs that could offer people more money, but this is just the range. 10 to 15K is what I'm gauging in the entry level jobs. Um, they do offer housing allowances and things like that. It does range from city to city. They do include bonuses if you resign, as well as flight reimbursements for going home. So these are the things that you can expect when you're looking at job posts. All right. Another thing I want to chat about is the interview process. Now, this is something that I think many of you um, have DM me about and said, you know, ugh, I had the interview, but they didn't accept me. I don't know why they didn't tell me. Um, and I want you to know that some of the times it's not you, it's the school. They already have someone in mind. They already know what they want. They already know what they want. So they're just doing a formality, okay? So put, put that in the back of your mind, okay? Another thing is be prepared with, you know, talking about your classroom routines. Walk them through what your day would be like in the classroom. Um, your teaching philosophy. I've mentioned this multiple times. Your experience with differentiated activities. So understanding that in your classroom, there are different students who have different learning strengths and abilities. So it's important that you have an approach to cater to those different groups especially when you're doing a topic that can be differentiated. You can also talk about your understanding of different responsibilities of ESL teachers, your kindergarten teachers, your international schools. So when you're going into the interview, guys, I highly recommend so that you get this job, whatever job you're looking for, you do your research, you know, and you are well prepared. And that thing that I always tell you guys is that not only is the school interviewing you, you are also interviewing the school to make sure that they are a good match for you. You, you know what I mean? So come prepared with questions. What are you doing for professional development? Are you going to assist me in the classroom in terms of providing support for differentiated learners? Because you find in the classroom, there's a kid who knows English, like her, the fluency is excellent. And then there's a child who knows nothing. So you ask them, what are, what resources do you have? Because some schools just throw you in the deep end and you like swim and then back kosher when they're like, ah, you're not doing your job. But did you give me the resources? Did you support me? You know what I mean? So these are the things that you need to ask. Okay. Another thing I want to chat about is that you are aware of the working hours. Some of you aren't aware of it. And when you get here, you're like, ha, guys, guys, in this country, um, this is one of the, this is one job ever in Pilonium that felt like I work for every penny in my salary. Okay. Guess it, and we work from 7.50 to 8.30. This is my school. This is an example, but most schools have this kind of work hours. 7.50 to 4.30 PM paid summer and winter breaks. Both are about two months long. Uh, some schools don't pay summer break or pay half things like that. So be aware of those things. I have 20 classes a week, five days a week, and the weekends are off. I work at, I work on the weekend on special occasions. Now here in China, when you have a public holiday, like a national public holiday, you must work it back. So how do I, what does that, what does that mean? For example, Tina, if we have Freedom Day, for example, we have a holiday in South Africa, Freedom Day, and um, you have that day off. If that day falls on a work day, we must work that day back on the weekend. On another weekend <laughs> so it's uh, like basically you're not really getting a holiday but this is how it works here so don't be surprised don't squint when they tell you things like you're working on a Saturday kind of just need to be like okay because you're making up blah 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 okay now I want to talk about how you can thrive as a teacher I know I feel like this video has been all over the place but I just want to chat about all the different things and kind of make you guys aware of how much things have changed and some things have kind of stayed the same but a lot has changed china really used to be kind of the, the pillar like the 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 place where everybody wants to come as esl teachers because the money is good um the requirements were quite easy to to kind of tick off and you know people were living their good lives here and it just felt attainable and it really was. I believe that post-COVID, coming to China was super attainable and it was possible. Now, I'm definitely on the fence. 
I've seen how people have kind of not get it, like not being renewed in their jobs. The market is very, very competitive. Um, it's difficult. It's, it's, it's a challenge. You need to have thick skin. You need to not give up. You need to kind of tell yourself, it's okay, I want this. There will be hurdles thrown at me. There will be, um, you know, moments where things are looking dark, but you need to trust God. Like I am a Christian guy, so I will constantly, constantly always say that is it this in Jaina? You need to hand them over to a higher power. Some things you can't control and there are going to be moments like that. And so that is why God needs to be invited from the beginning of this journey, because he is the one who's going to open the doors for you and make sure that is it or Zenze, because all guys will not happen. You're going to feel like, Hey, well, it's so stagnant. Um, so I really recommend, uh, if you are someone who believes in God to invite him on this journey. Okay. Because it is a journey. Okay. And then I want to talk about how to thrive. Okay. Uh, wait, before that, Young girl, thank you mentioned it, Sheila. All the documents, all the um, Durko, uh, Durko processes, uh, everything, just in terms of getting your stuff ready. I'm making a rough estimate of, it looks like, from what I can see on the websites and just calculations, 3,000 to about 5,000 rands in terms of your preparation. This is outside of paying for your degree and all of that. Just the process of getting everything done. Um, this is what you can budget, okay? And so that is what I wanted to mention. Like, prepare to spend some money um, to get this process started. Some schools reimburse you when they find you in terms of once you've done the interview. They're like, okay, do you have your Durko stuff? And you're like, no, I don't have those things. They'll be like, okay. We will help you to get those things, get them done, send receipts when you get here, kind of thing. And then if you are someone who's already done it, you are well ahead of it, you might not get reimbursed, but this will assure that your process is faster because you've already done all these things. You don't need to wait a month or two to get here. If you have all these things ready, you can just go ahead and send them through to your school. So yeah, well, it's very uh, circumstantial. It goes uh, by person to person. All right, so I want to chat about how to thrive because... A lot of teachers have gotten back, have uh, returned back to South Africa, have been here for a month, have returned back, have been in schools and kind of left the schools after a month. And I, I'm noticing a trend, and I think let's have a, let's have a, a, an open conversation about it because I think um, this channel I want us to all do well in whatever spaces that we enter. All right. So number one, um, as South Africans, I think this is something that was a big culture shock for me, excuse me. As a, and this is a perspective from a student. When I was a student, when I was a pupil in high school, primary school, my teachers were not... Like, they weren't over the top. They'd just come and teach and go. There was no need to build rapport. They didn't do icebreakers. It was those teachers who went that extra mile that I loved. You know what I mean? The ones that didn't go an extra mile, you had a respect for them, but it was like, okay, sharp, she's out, she's done, she's done her job. Now, in this China that we live in, those teachers, the ones who go an extra mile, the ones who build rapport, the ones who do that extra thing, smile, are extra, those are the ones, those are the ones that they want. Now, I know with this song that we don't have bubbly big personalities, but we can grow, we can, growth is usually uncomfortable, growth does get you out of your shell, you need to be aware that this is what they love, they love to see uh, teachers who come in a few minutes earlier before the class and spend some time with, spend some time with the kids, get to know the kids, they love the, the teachers that, you know, get to know the other Chinese colleagues in the school, smile, greet, be pleasant, be friendly, Linda Yoguti, I'm coming in, I'm doing my job, Gahamba. It will be tricky in this China. So I say that because I want you to be aware of it. And a lot of people, you might agree with me, you might disagree with me, but I have found that the teachers who go an extra mile, the teachers who do, you know, more than what they are asked, the teachers who spend time with the kids, who prepare extra games, rewards, ideas to make the cl classes more engaging. Those are the ones that get re-signed. Those are the ones that, that are listened to. And those are the ones that... Um, you know, the, the, the staff in the school can always speak for. Because another thing is that when it comes to your resigning or getting a, a, a resigned contract, 
They ask your colleagues, what unja in class? Are they always on their phone or do they interact with the kids? Like, you know what I mean? So your colleagues are also very, very important, okay? So I just want to mention that, all right? Another thing is be organized, guys. Prepare your lessons ahead of time. One thing I want to say, do not be late. Like, you need to train yourself to not be a late person. It's, it's frowned upon here. It's not a joke. It's not cute. Don't be late. For anything, you know what I mean? Especially in my class, especially getting into class and just doing things. Don't be late, you know what I mean? Uh, be open-minded. Be Have a teachable spirit. Um, I think many of times when you come to China, you think that it's one... Um, what's, the, what's the saying? Um, one, one size fits all. Yeah, I guess, yeah. One size fits all in terms of what you did in South Africa will work here. I promise you... Throw it out the window. Be Not throw it out the window completely, but be open-minded to learn how things are done in your school, to learn how other experienced teachers do things in your school. And so that leads me to my next point. Normalize observing your colleagues. Even if it's not a requirement in your school, have some camaraderie with your, with your colleagues. With, hey, let me come watch your class and see how you do this. Because, hey, my kids are not understanding it here. You know what I mean? Like, learn from each other instead of competing against each other. That will really go a long way with the how successful you are in your job. One of the reasons why I am so happy in my school is because I've got such great colleagues. Obviously, guys, we don't get along all the time. We do get uh, into disagreements, but there's a mutual respect. We understand the good we are educators. We care about the kids and everything that we do, we put the kids first. And so... Like, have that camaraderie with your employees, with your colleagues. Another thing I want to chat about is dress code, okay? Dress code, guys, think what I say, should I'm a mirror selfies. <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I like to post my mirror selfies on the, um, on my stories every morning. Guys, show up the way you want people to take you, you know? Is that a saying? Show up. Guys, what are you saying about showing up? Damn, I forgot it. But basically, how you show up, yes, this is the one. How you show up is how people will take you, okay? So if you are showing up as you haven't ironed your clothes, you smell like alcohol, your hair is not brushed, that is how they will take you. If you are Showing up professional, on time, neat. No one's saying do a beat every morning, but Sinjay, we'll be professional. Even in kindergarten, guys, you must, 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 must be professional. Take yourself seriously. Presentation is key. That is how they will remember you. That is how they will take you. You know what I mean? And so please, think about that. Put your best foot forward. Always, 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 okay? Don't be the teacher that they have to tell something twice. Like, that is for me something that I... Like, I can't. Like... Once they told me once, I do not want them to ever tell me again. You know what I mean? So please, please, please do those things to make sure that your time here, Jay, is great and you thrive. Lastly, I want you to also think about not being in a box, okay? Come up with ideas. Be innovative. Be creative. When you get to your school, you see, oh, they do something like this. How can I make it better? Sometimes you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Sometimes, 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 sometimes uh, when something works, it works. But now I'm talking about display boards. If you see, ah, our, our computer room, the, 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 the display board is looking old. Take initiative. Oh, let me do this. It literally will get you, I, I'm sorry, but it will score you ground, brownie points. And you want to put your best foot forward. And I know that shouldn't be the motivation <laughs> to get brownie points, but... This is the era that we're living in. It's competitive. You need to stand out. So these are the little things that cost you nothing. It literally costs you nothing to go online, print a few pictures of computers and kids on computers, make a beautiful heading, computer room, stick it up. And you can use the school's resources. It costs you nothing to go that extra mile for your school. So yeah, that is what I wanted to chat about, guys. I wanted to give you guys just... A few points on how to be just a better teacher when you arrive here, how to make your transition better, but also just to talk through the process. So if you are someone who wants to come to China and, and work here as a teacher, 
I have done videos about agencies. I will put it in the description box. Agencies that you can use to apply. I've mentioned Totally Teach, uh, Synergy. Um, yeah. So I found that I'll put the video that I put, I spoke about that documentation. I've spoken to you about, please, please, please make sure you have those things. Now, if you're asking yourself, Sba, when do I start applying for jobs? My recommendation is number one, make sure you have your degree in hand. It might not have to, it, it doesn't have to be, um, taken, taken to Durko as yet and all that stuff. If you don't have the money to do it now, but the key is that you have your degree in hand because most of the times the delays come when you don't have your degree. So have your degree, have your passport in hand and start applying. Oh, and your police clearance, because you know how our country some things take forever. Those three things you can start doing. You can start getting them done. So once you have those things, start applying. Start applying for jobs. Get, do some interviews. Get some rejections. See what's out there. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah. I hope this video was super helpful to you. I hope you uh, were able to learn something. If you know someone who wants to teach in China and wants to move abroad, send them this video. Let them know that Kule Chaneli, you are getting empowered with skills to make sure that you are able to live your best life abroad. Okay, my loves, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you for the love. And I can't wait to see you in the next video. Mwah.